Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Quarantine Theater Company and tonight's read of the 2001 musical Moulin Rouge. Um, this one is such a fun uh, movie, so hopefully we'll make a really fun read out of it for you tonight. Um, helping us out tonight is Chelsea. She is going to be reading our scene description for us. Um, Jennifer is here too as Toulouse and others. Uh, Kevin will be reading as the Argentinian and others. Um, Thea is here as Nini, Sadie, and some others as well. Eric will be reading as the doctor and some special guest musicians. Um, Travis will be reading as the Duke. I will be reading as Christian. Uh, Polly will be reading as Zidler. And Carolyn will be reading as Satine. So I hope you're as excited as I am. Let's go ahead and give it to Chelsea. 20th Century Fox presents a Basmark production, Moulin Rouge, transcribed by Kate Sith. The curtain opens, the conductor takes us through the opening titles. Paris, 1900. Toulouse in his sitar costume is sticking out of the window of the windmill above the Moulin Rouge. A garret with the word Le Mans can be seen in the background. There was a boy a very strange enchanted boy. They say Christian. he won. Just kidding. <laughs> Christian's <laughs> face appears on screen smiling and the, then fades out. They say he wandered very far. Fade to a view of the city of Paris from high up. We start to zoom into a village called Montmartre where we pass many different people. Very far over land and sea, a little shy. Voices can be heard in the background. Turn away from this village of sin. As we move into an alleyway, we see prostitutes and drunks. And sad of I, but very wise, was he, thank we move up above a sign that says Bar Absinthe and through the window of the rundown Le Mans Garret. And then one day. Inside is a bearded Christian sitting on the floor holding a bottle of alcohol, head in arms. A magic day he passed my way. Christian looks up, gazing painfully at his typewriter across the room and the empty glass next to it. And while we spoke of many things, just kidding, choose your own key, fools and kings. There we go. Christian sits down at his typewriter, staring at the blank piece of paper he has just put in, in some sort of deep grief. And we forgive him for being off key because he is drunk. Yes, I'm trying. <laughs> My wine's right there. This he said to me. The greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. The Moulin Rouge. We are moving back past the same windmill from before, only it looks much fresher. I might club. We see the inside of the Moulin Rouge Rich men in top hats are dancing with the diamond dogs, young can, can dancers and other strange looking people, a dance hall and a bordello. Zidler comes out from behind a curtain. Ruled over by Harold Zidler, a kingdom of nighttime pleasures where the rich and powerful came to play with the young and beautiful creatures of the underworld. We move back over the windmill. The most beautiful of all these was the woman I loved. Satine, face in shadow, sits in stage lights with a hat and a cigarette. Satine, a courtesan. She sold her love to men. We move past the elephant outside the Moulin Rouge. They called her the sparkling diamond. The words we hear are appearing on Christian's typewriter. And she was the star of the Moulin Rouge. The lit up Moulin Rouge sign flashes in our view and we're back to the typing of what he said. The woman I loved is. Christian looks out his window at the Moulin Rouge across the street. 
dead. A pause, then he continues typing. I first came to Paris one year ago. We move out of the lively dancing Moulin Rouge back to a view of the entire city. It was 1899, the summer of love. I knew nothing of the Moulin Rouge, Harold Zidler or Satine. We then zoom into the train station where a slightly younger and more vibrant Christian is getting off the train, holding his bags and gazing about in wonderment. The world had been swept up in a bohemian revolution and I had traveled from London to be a part of it. We can see different parts of the city. On a hill near Paris was the village of Montmartre. Christian looks up at the Montmartre sign, eyes sparkling. It was not as my father had said. A village, a village of sin. But the center of the bohemian world. In the alley next to the Bar Absinthe sign, the drunk from before now looks very alive, playing a sitar and singing with other bohemians. Children of the revolution. Musicians, painters, writers, they were known as the children of the revolution. We move up to Christian's garret. The sign says La Mort, and everything looks much less rundown. Christian is standing in the window. Yes, I had come to live a penniless existence. Christian is happily setting up his typewriter and preparing to write. I had come to write about truth, beauty, freedom, and that which I believed in above all things, love. Flash two. Always this ridiculous obsession with love. There was only one problem. Freeze frame on Christian's face. Uh-oh. I'd never been in love. We see our future Christian's words on the typewriter. Luckily, right at that moment, an unconscious Argentinian fell through my roof. Past Christian turns and stands in surprise as the narcoleptic Argentinian falls through his roof. Back to the typewriter. He was quickly joined by a dwarf dressed as a nun. Well, how do you do? My name is Henri Marie Ramon de Toulouse Lautrec Monfa. What? Oh, I'm terribly sorry about all this. We were just upstairs rehearsing a play. Oh, what? A play? Something very modern called Spectacular Spectacular. And it's set in Switzerland! Unfortunately, the unconscious Argentinian suffered from a sickness called narcolepsy. <laughs> Perfectly fine, one moment, and then suddenly, <laughs> unconscious the next. <laughs> the faces of the doctor, Audrey, and Sati appear through the hole from which the Argentinian came. Toulouse and Christian look up at them. How is he? I'm Audrey. How wonderful now that narco narcoleptic Argentinian is now unconscious and therefore the scenario will not be finished in time to present the financier tomorrow. Right, Toulouse, I still have to finish the music. We'll just find someone to finish the pod. Now where in heaven's name are we going to find someone to read the role of the young sensitive, sensitive Swiss poet goat herder? All eyes go to Christian. Before I knew it, I was upstairs standing in for the unconscious Argentinian. Everyone is now upstairs. Christian is standing back on a little makeshift hill set in goat herder clothes, watching everyone in extreme confusion. Satie is playing unbelievably annoying music on some loud instrument. Audrey is directing. Toulouse is dancing around and singing in nun's clothes. The doctor is doing something odd with his lights. And the Argentinian is passed out. The hills are ablaze with the euphonious symphonies of Despar. Oh, stop, 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 stop. 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 Stop! Stop! I did. Oh, okay. He goes to Satie. Audrey. Tell Your you. line's not done yet. Oh, it's still not. The insufferable drowning is drying out my words. Can we please just stick to a little decorative piano? There seem to be artistic differences over Audrey's lyrics to Satie's songs. I don't think a nun would say that about a hill. What if he sings, the hills are vital, intoning the de descent? No, 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 the hills quake and shake. No, 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 the hills tone. The hills are incantate with symphonic melodics. <clears throat> 
And the babble continues with everyone saying sentences that start with the hills and end in nonsense. Or, Frankie is living in my foot. Christian seems to have something, but no one's paying attention until, The hills are alive with the sound of music. Everyone stares in silence. The hills are alive with the sound of music. I love it. Christian gives a relieved sigh. The hills are alive. With that sound of music. They turn to Christian. It fits perfectly. Perfectly. <laughs> With songs they have sung for a thousand years. <gasps> Incandiferous. Audrey, you two should write the show together. I beg your pardon? But Toulouse's suggestion that Audrey and I write the show together was not what Audrey wanted to hear. Goodbye. Here's to your first job in Paris. Takes the swig of absinthe. Toulouse, Zindler would never agree. No offense, but have you ever written anything like this before? No. Ma. Ah. The boy has talent. He reaches up a hand to Christian, but since Christian is on the ladder still, he winds up with his hand on little Christian. I like him. Notices the placement and draws his hand back quickly. <clears throat> Nothing funny. <laughs> I just like talent. The hills are alive with the sound of music. See, Sati, with Christian, we can write a truly bohemian revolutionary show that we've always dreamt of. But how will we convince Ziegler? But Toulouse had a plan. <gasps> Satine. Satine. They glance back at Christian in the midst of their planning, who gives them a nervous smile like he's not extremely curious about what they're saying. They would dress me in the Argentinian's best suit and pass me off as a famous, famous English writer. Once Satine had my modern poetry, she would be astounded and insist to Zidler that I write spectacular, spectacular. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only problem was, I kept hearing my father's voice in my head. Flash two. You'll end up wasting your life at the Moulin Rouge with a can-can dancer. Oh, I can't write the show for the Moulin Rouge. Runs to the hole in the floor and starts to climb back down to his garret. The bohos stop him. Why not? I, I don't even know if I'm a true bohemian revolutionary. <gasps> what? what? Do you believe in beauty? Yes. Freedom. Yes, of course. Truth. Yes. Love. Love. Uh, love above all things. I believe in love. Love is like oxygen. Love is a many splendored thing. Love lifts us up where we belong. All you need is love. <laughs> oh, you see, you can't fool us. You're the voice of the children of the revolution. We can't, we can't be, be fooled. They pull Christian back out of the hole. Let's drink to the new word of the world's first bohemian revolutionary show. The Argentinian plants a big old smooch on the lips of a very overwhelmed Christian. <laughs> it was the perfect plan. I was to audition for Satine. The doctor is pouring absinthe for Christian and the bohos. And I would taste my first glass of absinthe. Christian downs a shot. There was a boy. The green fairy on the bottle looks at them. The green fairy. She flies out into the sky, fairy dust all around her, as Christian and the bohos watch in drunken enthrallment. With the sound of music. Everyone laughs drunkenly as the Green Fairy starts dirty dancing to Children of the Revolution music. A very strange, enchanted boy. The Bohos and Christian stand out on the balcony, Christian now dressed in the Argentinian suit and top hat, and sing as the Green Fairy makes the words freedom, beauty, and truth with her fairy dust, outlining the L'Amour sign instead of writing love. 
Yeah, yeah the beauty freedom, beauty, the truth, and love. And love. With the sound of music, children of the revolution, children of the revolution, will you won't, won't fool the children of the revolution. No, you won't fool the children of the revolution. On beauty, truth, and love. We were off to the Moulin Rouge, and I was to perform my poetry for Satine. The green fairy's eyes turn blood red, and she lets out an Ozzy Osbourne scream as the bohos and Christian fall off the roof and into a swirling vo vortex that take them into the Moulin Rouge. Where Zidler comes out from the entrance, and already we can see the knickers of Can Can dancers. The Moulin Rouge! <laughs> Christian is looking around the Moulin Rouge, even more overwhelmed than before, seeing all the same things that we saw during our brief introduction earlier. Harold Zidler and his infamous girls, they called them his diamond dogs. The diamond dogs. Hey, sister, go, sister, go, sister, sister, flo, sister, hey. All the can can dancers are coming out and strutting their stuff. All the rich men in top hats seem to be having the time of their lives, and Christian looks overwhelmed. If work's an awful bore, and living's just a chore. Hey, sister, go, sister, soul, sister, flow, sister. What to do? Cause death's not much fun. Hey, hey sister, go, sister, soul, sister, flow, sister. I've just the antidote, and though I mustn't gloat. Gitchy, 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 ya, 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 da, da. The Moulin Rouge, you'll have fun! Gitchy, gitchy, ya, ya, here. Toulouse is dancing with someone. So scratch that little. The crowd is now dancing with the girls. Green. <laughs> <laughs> We come back through the Moulin Rouge doors and Christian and the Bohos are dancing along with all the rich men in top hats. Here we are, Here we are now. now. Entertain, Entertain us. us. We, we feel, feel stupid. stupid. And contagious. Us. Got some dark desire. Love to play with fire. Why not let it rip? Live a little bit. Here we, we are, are now. now. Entertain, Entertain us. us. As you can, can, can! Now the rich men and the diamond dogs dance together. We feel so stupid. Can, 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 Oh, you can't, can, can't! Voulez le coucher avec moi, ce soir. As you can, can, can! Voulez le coucher avec moi. Outside it may be raining. But in here, it's entertaining! After some shots of things like a girl with a large snake and old men in top hats and tutus, Zidler gives a Tarzan yodel and sort of flies back into the Moulin Rouge. Oh! Don't 
Because you can, can, can! Because you can, can, can! Does back handsprings in front of the can can dancers. Because you can, can, can! Here we are now. Entertain us! Outside things may be tragic, but in here we think it's magic! Nini seems to be having a great time showing off her area. Here we are now. Us. We feel stupid. From his perch above everything, Zidler cuts off all music and dancing. The Can Can. Flips the Moulin Rouge dance sign over to Can Can. The Diamond Dogs and dancers line themselves up for the dance. And everyone starts canning like mad. Hey, sister, go, sister, soul, sister, flow, sister. Hey, sister, go, sister, soul, sister, flow, sister, kitchen, 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 yeah, yeah, da, da, da. Kitchen, kitchen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can, can, can! Yes, you can, can, can! Kitchen, 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 yeah, yeah, da, da, da. Creole Creole lady, lady, mama, lady, 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 We've a sex successfully evaded Zidwa! Cause you can, 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 can! The music stops and everything darkens. Everyone looks up. Some sparkles and smoke flow down from above, all over the rich men in top hats. It's her, the sparkling diamond. Satine is lowered into the room slightly, sitting on a trapeze swing and looking porcelain and ethereal in her sparkling diamond outfit, because we all know Nicole Kidman is absolutely beautiful. Christian gazes up at her, love at first sight. But someone else was to meet Satine that night. The Duke watches Satine with an expression not too unlike Christian's, just replace love with lust. But I prefer a man who lives. Fiddler's investor. And gives expensive jewels. Satine begins to lower into the audience. The crowd cheers and reaches their hands up for her. The Duke. Forever. They are all I need to please me. They can stimulate and tease me. They won't leave in the night. I've no fear that they might desert me. Diamonds are forever. Hold one up and then caress it. Touch it, stroke it, and undress it. I can see every part. Nothing hides in their heart to hurt me. Diamonds are forever and ever and ever. Satine gets to the floor and struts and dances among the overjoyed crowd. Christian seems unable to tear his gaze away. On the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds, diamonds are, are a girl's best, best friend. friend. A kiss may be grand, but it won't pay the rental on your humble flat or help you feed your pussycat. Men, Men grow, grow old, old as girls grow old, old, and we all lose our charms in the end. But square, but square cut, cut or pear, or pear shape. shape, these rocks, these rocks don't, don't lose their shape. Diamonds, diamonds are a girl's best, best friend. friend. 
When am I going to meet the girl? Off to, her <laughs> Off to her number. I've arranged a special meeting. Just you and Mademoiselle Satine totally alone. Hello, oh, TA. She snatches some flowers from one of the men. After her number, I've arranged a private meeting. Do you and Mademoiselle Satine totally alone? Alone? Yes. Totally, totally alone. As we, As are, we living are living in a material world, world. And, and I, I am, am a material, material girl. girl. Come and get me, boys. She does some more crowd writing. Woo! Excuse me. Black Star, Ross Cole. Talk to me, Harry Zidler. Tell me all about it. There may come a time when a lass meets a lawyer, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. There may come a time when your hard barred employer thinks you're awful nice. But get that ice or else no dice. Oh no, hold on. Oh my goodness, don't worry, don't worry. I'll sally forth and tee things up. She turns and knocks a tray over onto the duke. You'll give by when stocks are high, but beware when they start to descend. You here, Harold. Pigeon, would daddy let you down? They both turn and Zidler sees Toulouse having spilled stuff all over the duke. I'm terribly sorry. Where is he? He's the one Toulouse is shaking a hanky at. Christian, excuse me, Mayor Barber? She pulls out Christian's hanky. Diamonds are, are a, girl's a girl's best. best. Diamonds are a girl's best. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. You sure? Let me peek. Ooh. Jesus, you stupid filter. That's the one, chickpea. <laughs> Uh, he holds out the diamond thing for Satine, who takes it excitedly for the audience. I hope that demonic little loon doesn't frighten him off. Clean yourself up, you bourgeois pig! <laughs> Ooh. Sorry! Sorry! She goes back over to the boho table, or he does. Satine and Zidler are dancing somewhat dirtily and then duck underneath a sort of curtain that the Cantan dancers have made with their skirts. Satine is changing her outfit and Zidler is taking his clothes off. Invest. Pigeon, after spending the night with you, how could he refuse? What's his type? Wilting flower? Hmm. Bright and bubbly? <laughs> or smoldering temptress i'd say smoldering temptress we're all relying on you gosling Olé! remember a real show in a real theater with a real audience and you'll be say that again dear i didn't hear you you'll be a real actress. She sighs then smiles for the audience as the can can dancers take their skirts down. Zidler is in his long underwear looking as though she undressed him in there. Because that's when those louses go back to their spouses. Pigeon! Pigeon! Diamonds are a girl's 
He has made her way over to Christian, who turns his head and gawks at her. I believe you were expecting me. Yes. Yes. I'm afraid it's lady's choice. She points to Christian. Christian freaks out more and turns to his boho friends who try to encourage him. Satine looks mock offended and turns back to the crowd with an adorable pout. And so on. Satine dances about a bit, making sexy noises. I see you've already met my English friend, Christy. I'll take care of it, Toulouse. <gasps> Let's dance. Give her your most modern poems! Satine spins around and then pulls Christian out on the dance floor. To the beat of the rhythm, the rhythm of, of the, the night. night. Dance until the morning light and forget, forget about, about the worries, worries on your, on your mind. mind. You can leave them all behind. Satine dances about and some rich men push Christian out there with her. To the beat of the rhythm, the rhythm of the night. Dance until the morning light and forget about forget the about worries on your, on your mind. mind. You can leave them all behind. Christian is trying to dance with her but seems a little overwhelmed again as she's all over him. That seemed to go well. Incredible. Argentinian. <clears throat> Did you fall yep. asleep again? He has a gift with the women. I told you he's a genius. The other rich men are dancing with can can dancers who are doing the same stuff as Satine, but only Christian seems to feel awkward with it. That Duke certainly can't dance. It's so wonderful of you to take an interest in our little show. Well, it sounds very exciting. I'd be delighted to be involved. Really? Assuming you like what I do, of course. I'm sure I will. They all dance some more and Christian tips his hat at the bohos. The bohos tip back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now. Toulouse thought we might be able to um, do it in private. Did he? Here, Here we, we are, are now. now. Yes, you know, a, a, a private uh, poetry reading. Entertain us. us. Oh. Here we, Here are, we are, now. are now. Entertain, Entertain us. us. Poetry reading. Oh, I love a little poetry after supper. She grabs at him a little. Here we Here are we now. now. Enter to entertain us. us. Here, Here we, we are, are now. Entertain, entertain us. Take off your hats. The crowd tosses their top hats into the air, which can be seen from our momentary aerial view of Paris. When we're back inside, Satine is back on the trapeze swing, being taken back up, and the crowd dances around her hand in hand. Ah. Diamonds, diamonds, square cut or pear shaped. These rocks won't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best. She gasps suddenly as though she's in pain or having trouble breathing. Zidler notices something's wrong, but the crowd does not. As they reach out for the song's final word, Satine topples off her swing and into the crowd below. No! Luckily, Chocolat is there to catch her. There's a horrified silence as Chocolat looks to Zidler for instruction. Zidler nods his head back towards Satine's dressing room, and Chocolat hurries her over there. The crowd is silent and Christian looks extremely concerned. Zidler suddenly shouts and claps, easily stirring, excited cheering and applause from throughout the crowd. Satine, Satine, Satine. The crowd joins in while Chocolat and Petit Princess are taking the unconscious Satine back to her dressing room, passing the diamond dogs on their way. Don't know if the Duke's gonna get his money's worth tonight. Don't be unkind, Nini. Chocolat lays Satine down gently and the diamond dogs gather around. Out in the dance hall, Zidler cuts off the crowd's chanting. You frightened her away. 
Oh. Oh. But I can see some lonely Moulin Rouge dancers looking for a partner or two. Christian and Boho still seem worried. So if you can, hunk hunk, you can hunk a dola with them. He turns the can-can sign over to Hunkadola. The orchestra starts back up and people begin to dance again. Back in the dressing room, Marie enters. Out of the way, baby doll. Uses smelling salts to wake up Satine, who seems flushed and out of breath. Marie, all these silly costumes. Oh, just a little fainting spell. All right, you girls, back outside and make those gents thirsty. He shoves the diamond dogs back out there and approaches Marie and Satine. Problems? Nothing for you to be worried about. Well, let's not stand around then. Marie glares at him as he walks away. Chocolat leaves too, still worried. Satine begins to gasp and cough violently into a hanky. When she pulls it away from her mouth, it is stained with blood. Marie is notably unnerved. Chocolat and the dancers are all back out entertaining the crowd. They call them the Diamond Dogs. Dogs. A bit later, everyone is still having fun, but it's cooled down. The Duke is all uptight about something. He walks up to Warner. Find Zidler. The girl is waiting for me. In the dressing room, Marie is tying a corset on Satine, now wearing a sexy red dress and doing her makeup. That twinkle toes Duke is really taking the bait, girl. Satine giggles a bit. With a patron like him, you could be the next Sarah Barnhart. Oh, Marie, do you really think I could be like the great Sarah? Why not? You've got the talent. You hooked that Duke, you'll be lining up the great stages of Europe. You're going to be a real actress, Marie. A great actress. I'm going to fly away from here. Looks over at the bird in the gilded bird cage hanging next to her. Uh, Bling, is everything all right? Yes, of course, Harold. Oh, thank goodness. You certainly weaved your magic with that duke on the dance floor. How do I look? Smoldering temptress. Oh, my little strawberry. How could he possibly resist gobbling you <laughs> up? Everything's going so well! Later, Christian stands in the window of the elephant, playing nervously with his hat, while Satine is taking off her red dress behind something. The bohos can see him from outside, where there are people dancing and having fun all over the place. Unbelievable! Straight to the elephant! This is a wonderful place for a poetry reading, don't you think? Hmm? Acts sultry while Christian eyes her nervously. Poetic enough? for you? Oh, yes. The bohos are climbing up the back of the elephant to spy, giggling. A little supper? Maybe some champagne? Well, I'd rather just um, get it over and done with. Oh. Very well. Then why don't you come down here? And let's get it over and done with. I prefer to do it standing. You don't have to stand, I mean. It's sometimes that it's quite long. And I'd like you to be comfortable. It's quite modern what I do. And it may feel a little strange at first, but if I think if you're open, then, then you might enjoy it. I'm sure I will. Excuse me. <clears throat> the, the sky is... Uh, he can't seem to speak straight because of Satine's horny behavior. Oh, the sky, the blue birds, 
He turns back around and blows air through his lips, like in a theatrical exercise. Come on, come on. He psychs himself up and turns around again. I think... Satine is lying on her back, moaning loudly, so he turns around again. Why am I so shaky? Does more vocal exercises. Is everything all right? Uh, I, uh, I'm a little nervous. It's just, sometimes it takes a while for, um, oh. you know, inspiration to come. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let mummy help then, hmm? She grabs his crotch. Does that inspire you? She throws him onto the bed. Oh. Let's make love. Make love? You want to, don't you? Oh, well, I, I came to... No, tell the truth. You feel the poetry. What? The boho's dropped to loose down on a rope so he can see through the window. Oh, come on. Woo! Feel it, tiger. She lets out some cat-like yelps while she works on undoing his pants. Christian seems fearfully turned on. They both look down at Christian's presumably open fly. He's got a huge talent! Oh yes, I need your poetry now. All right. He escapes and runs to the end of the end of other end of the room. Satine falls over. It's a little bit funny. What? This feeling inside. I'm not one of those who can who can easily hide. Is is this okay? Is is this what you want? Yes, yes, this is what I want, naughty words. I, I, I don't. Oh, yes, naughty. I don't have much money, but boy, if I did, I'd buy a big house where we, where we both could live. So if I were a sculptor, Satine has rolled onto the floor and crawls a bit closer to him, still making horny sounds. Uh, but then again, no. Or a man who makes potions in a traveling show. Oh, wonderful. Oh, don't, don't, don't. Oh, oh, don't stop. I, I know it's not much. Give me more, yes, yes. But it's the best I can do. Naughty, don't stop. Yes, yes, yes. My gift is my song. Satine stops and gazes at him, stunned. The bohos looked up from their spot on the roof. The city of Paris lights up. Christian turns to look at her. And this one's for you. And you can tell everybody that this is your song. It may be quite simple, but now that it's done, I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is. Now you're in the world. He turns back to the window. Now it's Satine's turn to be in love. I sat on the roof and I kicked off the moss. Satine stands and takes a hesitant step closer to him. Well, some of these verses, well, they, they've got me quite cross. He turns back to her and they approach each other. But the sun's been kind while I wrote this song. It's for people like you that Keep it turned on. So excuse me for getting, but these things I do. You see, I've forgotten if they're green or they're blue. Anyway, the thing is what I really mean. He takes her hand. Yours are the sweetest eyes. I've ever seen. 
He twirls her and they leap outside to dance among the clouds and the stars while the moon sings in Italian. It's raining sparkles. So he pulls out an umbrella. And you can tell everybody this is your song. It may be quite simple, but now that it's done. The bohos watch and cheer as Satine twirls over to him. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is. Now you're in the world. He twirls her and lifts her up, the boho shouting and laughing excitedly, and they're back in the elephant, arms around each other. I can't believe it. I'm in love. I'm in love with the young, handsome, talented Duke. Duke? No, not that title's important, of course. I'm not a Duke. Not a Duke. I'm a writer. A writer? Yes, a, a writer. No. In Toulouse. Toulouse? Oh no, no, not another of Toulouse's oh so talented, charmingly bohemian, tragically impoverished prodigies. Oh, well, you might say that. Oh no, I'm going to kill him. I think there might be a small hitch. Satine runs through the door, Christian follows her. Toulouse told me. What about the Duke? Opens the door. Zidler and the Duke are standing out there. My dear Duke. The Duke. The Duke. My dear. Zidler and the Duke burst in, so Satine hides Christian behind her robe. My dear, are you decent for the Duke? Satine whirls around, keeping Christian behind her. Where were you? I uh, was, I was waiting. My dearest Duke, allow me to introduce Mademoiselle Satine. Monsieur, how wonderful of you to take time out of your busy schedule to visit. She glances back and glares at Christian, who is peeking out. Christian hides again. The pleasure, I fear, will be entirely mine, my dear. I'll leave you squirrels to get acquainted. Ta-ta! Yes, on the hand, it may be quite coincidental. But diamonds are a girl's best friend. After tonight's petty exertions on the stage, you must surely be in need of refreshments, my dear. She starts to turn to the table, Christian ducks. Don't you just love the view, hmm? Charming. Reaches for the table again. Oh, I feel like dancing. Starts to dance around and makes odd noises. Christian pokes out again and gawks at her. Uh, uh, my dear, would you like a glass of champagne? Goes for it again, Christian ducks. No. The Duke turns and stares at her. It's, it's a little bit funny. What is? This. Christian mouths feeling. Feeling. Christian points and mouths inside. Inside? Christian mouths the next part. I'm not one of those who can easily hide. Christian knocks a candle over and ducks quickly. Satine latches onto the Duke's legs before he can turn and see. I don't have much money, but if I did, oh, I'd buy a big house where we both could live. Peeks through the Duke's legs to point Christian out the door to the other side. I hope you don't mind. Stands up slowly as Christian sneaks to the door, watching them. I hope you don't mind that I put down in words. Glancing at Christian as though she's singing to him. How wonderful life is. Now you're in the world. 
world. Duke's eyes sparkle as only a rat's can. That's very beautiful. It's from Spectacular Spectacular. Suddenly with, with you here, I finally understood the true meaning of those words. Kristen is opening the door and backing out. How wonderful life is. No longer. What meaning is that, my dear? Christian sees Warner standing out there and quickly slams the door shut. It's loud, so Satine throws herself on the bed and pretends to sob. Christian <laughs> tries to hide in ridiculous places. Duke, don't you toy with my emotions. You, you must know the effects that you have on women. Yes, making them crave cheese. She grabs the Duke and pulls him down on top of her. Boing. Let's make love. You want to make love, don't you? She barely kisses him and waves Christian to the other side of the room. He runs there, but stops before he can hide. Oh, I knew you felt the same way. Oh, oh, Duke. Christian turns to her and she waves him out frantically. He won't budge. Yes, you're right. We should wait until opening night. She pushes him off. Christian gives a satisfied nod and then hides. Wait, what? There's, there's a power in you that scares me. You should go. She leads him to the door. I just got here. Oh yes, but we'll see each other every day during rehearsal. We must wait. We must wait until opening night. Get out. She opens the door and pushes him out, turns back to the approaching Christian and stalks over to him. Do you have any idea, any idea what would happen if you were found? She suddenly seems breathless and pale. She passes out onto Christian. Oh, oh, oh my God, Satine. He tries to shake her awake. Let's have a little peekaboo. He sees Christian shaking Satine, only it looks like Satine having sex with someone standing up. Right on target. Christian hoists her up and looks around awkwardly. Uh, I'll put you on the bed. Christian manages to get her over to the bed while the bohos peer in from behind the wall. It seems they've made it inside. Christian has to sort of climb on top of her in order to place her in a comfortable position. The Duke walks in. I forgot my... Christian looks like a deer in headlights. Power play? Uh, she... I... Oh, Duke! It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. No! Yes, beautifully spoken, Duke. Yes, let me introduce you. The writer. The writer? Yes. Oh, yes, we were, we were rehearsing. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? Scantily clad in the arms of another man in the middle of the night inside an elephant, you were rehearsing? How's the rehearsal going? He is quickly followed by the other bohos. Shall I take it from the top? It's a teen. I hope the piano's in tune. Uh, sorry that we are late. Can I offer you a drink? Holds out a bottle to him. Oh my goodness! He runs off. When I spoke those words to you before, you... You filled me with such inspiration. Yes, I realized how much work we had to do before tomorrow, so I called everyone in for an emergency rehearsal. If you're rehearsing, where is Zidler? Oh, I wouldn't borrow, bother, Harold. My dear Duke, I'm most terribly sorry. Harold, you made it. It's all right. The Duke knows all about the emergency rehearsal. The emergency rehearsal? Mm, to incorporate the Duke's artistic idea. Yes, well, I'm sure Audrey will be only too delighted. Audrey's left! What? What? Harold, the cat's out of the bag. Yes, the Duke's already a big fan of our new writer's work. That's why he's so keen to invest. Invest? Invest! Oh, yes, yes, well, invest! <laughs> you can hardly blame me for trying to hide our... Um, uh, the, um, uh, Christian. Christian! Christian, no way! <laughs> I'm way ahead of you, Zidler. <laughs> my dear Duke, why don't you and I go to my office to produce the paperwork? What's the story? story? Well, if 
I'm to invest, I'll need to know the story. Oh, yes. Well, the story's about Toulouse. All eyes go to Toulouse. Uh, well, uh, well, the story's, uh, the story's about, well, it's about, um... It's about love. All eyes go to Christian. Uh, it's about love overcoming all obstacles. And it's set in Switzerland! Christian gives him a funny look. Switzerland? It's not in Switzerland! India, India, it's set in India. He looks at Satin. And there's a courtesan, the most beautiful courtesan in the world. He glares at the Duke. But her kingdom is invaded by an evil Maharaja. Now, in order to save her kingdom, she has to seduce the evil Maharaja. But on the night of the seduction, she mistakes a penniless, pe penniless, penniless. He sees a sitar and picks it up. A penniless sitar player for an evil Maharaja. And she falls in love with him. He wasn't trying to trick her or anything, but he was dressed as a Maharaja because he's appearing in a play. I will play the penniless tango dancing sitar player. I sing like an angel, but dance like the devil. Yes, yes, all right. And, and what happens next? Well, the penniless sitar player and the courtesan, they have to hide their love from the evil Maharaja. The penniless sitar player's sitar is magical. It can only speak the truth. It is I who will play the magical sitar. Puts himself behind the sitar so it looks like his head on the end of the instrument. Makes a sitar noise and turns to Satine. You are beautiful. Makes it again and turns to Zidler. You are ugly. Turns to the Duke. And you are... Everyone covers his mouth. Yes! And he gives the game away. <laughs> Tell them about the can can. It's, it's a t ten trick can can. It's it's an erotic spectacular scene that captures the thrusting, violent, vibrant, wild bohemian spirit that this whole production embodies. You. What do you mean by that? I mean the show will be a magnificent, opulent, tremendous, stupendous. Gargantuan bedazzlement, a sensual ravishment. It will be. Everyone prepares for the upcoming musical number. Spectacular, spectacular. No words of the vernacular can describe this great event. Whew. You'll be dumb with wonderment. Returns are fixed at 10%. You must agree, that's excellent. And on top of your feet, you'll be involved So exciting. Audience. So stop and cheer. So delighting. They will run for 50 years. So exciting. Audience. So stop and cheer. So delighting. They will run for 50 years. Elephants! Bohemians! Indians! Partisans! Acrobats! And juggling bears! Exotic girls! Fire! Fire! Muscle man! Danger! Danger! So the so exciting! 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 So 
The courtesan and sitar man are pulled apart by an evil plan. And he hears his song. And their love is just too strong. A little bit funny, this feeling inside. So, so exciting in the audience is so much. So delighting. The sitar player's secret song helps him flee the evil one. Though the tyrant rants and rails, it is all to no avail. I am the evil Maharaja. You will not escape. Oh, Harold, no one can play him like you could. No one's going to. So, so exciting. We'll make them laugh. We'll make them cry. So delighting. And in the end, did someone die? So, so exciting, the audience will come at you. So delighting, the audience will They pose. Warner walks in, and Toulouse jumps on him, using him to pose. Generally, I like it. Everyone <laughs> cheers and hugs the Duke. Zidler had an investor. And the Bohemians had a show. Later that night, everyone is partying around the Moulin Rouge and above Christian's garret to the children of the revolution. It's the end of the century. The Bohemian revolution is here. Yes. He throws his drinks. The bohos, the diamond dogs, and lots of other random people seem to be dancing and having sex. While the celebratory party raged upstairs, I tried to write, but all I could think about was her. How wonderful life is. Was she thinking about me? Now you're in the world. Satine is sitting alone in the dark elephant by the mirror. Duke, I'm not a duke, I'm a writer. He wasn't trying to trick her or anything. It's about love and about love overcoming all obstacles. Satine and Christian can barely see each other across the Moulin Rouge through their respective windows. Satine slowly walks closer and Christian moves back to his typewriter. I begin to live again. Christian is looking out his window again and he can see Satine leaning in her own. They all fly away, leave all this to yesterday. What more could your love do for me? When will love be through with me? Christian walks to his window. Why live life from dream to dream and dread the day when dreaming and How wonderful life is, now you're in the world. Satine is heading up the steps to the top of the elephant and Christian quickly leaves his garret. When Satine looks, she can see he's not there anymore. One day I'll fly away. Leave all this to yesterday. Why live life from dream to dream? Christian heads toward the elephant. The day when dreaming ends. Christian is climbing up the back of the elephant the same way the bohos did earlier. Satine sits down. Satine 
Sorry. Satine cries out in surprise, stands and whirls around to him. Sorry, I, I didn't mean, I, I, I saw your light on and I, I climbed up the- What? Well, I couldn't sleep and I, want, I wanted to thank you for helping me get the job. Oh, of course. Yes, uh, Toulouse, Toulouse was right. You're, you're very talented. Christian looks modest. It's going to be a wonderful show. Anyway, I just better go. We, uh, we both have a big day tomorrow. Wait, no, please wait. Satine stops and turns to him expectantly. Before, when we were, well, when we were, when he thought I was the Duke, you said that you loved me. And, and, and I wondered if, if, if it was just an act? Yes. Of course. Oh. It just felt real. I'm a courtesan. I'm paid to make men believe what they want to believe. Yes. It's silly of me to think that you could fall in love with someone like me. I can't fall in love with anyone. Can't fall in love? <laughs> but a life without love, that's terrible. No, oh, living on the streets, that's terrible. No! Satin can't seem to believe he's saying this. Love is like oxygen. What? Love is a many splendored thing. Love lifts us up where we belong. All you need is love. Please don't start that again. All you need is love. Girls got to eat. All you need is love. You'll end up on the streets. All you need is love. Love is just a game. I was made for loving you, baby. You were made for loving me. The only way of loving me, baby, is to pay a lovely fee. Just one night, give me just one night. There's no way, cause you can pay. In the name of love, one night in the name of love. I won't give in to you. It's so easy. All you have to do is fall in love. All you have to do is play the game. He touches her face softly. Scars. All you have to do is take on me. Satine walked away. No, no, it ain't me, babe. Take me on. No, because you'll be gone in a day or two. I love you always, forever, near and far, closer, together, everywhere. I will be with you in the battlefield. Everything I will do for you. Don't speak. I know just what you're thinking so please stop explaining don't tell me because it hurts open up your eyes then you'll realize here i stand in my everlasting love need you by my side girl you'll be my bride you'll never be denied everlasting love what love got to do got to do with it what's love but a second hand emotion. What's love got to do, got to do with it? Who needs a heart when the heart can be broken? You're breaking my heart. Suppose I never ever met you. What's love got to do with it? Suppose we never fell in love. Who needs a heart? Suppose I kept on singing love songs. 
this music breaks my heart. Yes, it breaks my heart. Yes, it breaks my heart. But I can't help falling in love with you. Faith, this is how I feel. I'm cold and I'm shamed, lying naked on the floor. Things are never changed into something real. I'm wide awake and I can see the perfect sky is torn. They will see us waving from such great heights. Come down now, they'll say. Everything, Everything looks perfect, perfect from far away. Come down now, but we'll stay. Christian runs and stands up on the elephant's skylight, nearly losing his balance. Because love lifts us up where we belong. Get down, get down. Where the eagles fly on a mountain high. Love makes us act like we are fools. Throw our lives away for one happy day. She heads back down the stairs. We could be heroes just for one day. He follows her. You will be mean. No, I won't. And I I'll drink all the time. She heads back to the elephant. We should be lovers. I'll do that. We should be lovers, and that's a fact. Us together. We could we steal, could steal time, time just for, us for one day. day. We could be heroes forever and ever. We could be heroes forever and ever. We could be heroes just because I will always love you. going to be bad for business i can tell and they kiss the moon sings in italian toulouse stands in the window above christian scary mm -hmm. drunk and crying hmm. i forgot my mustache because i was so drunk oh my goodness how wonderful life is now you're in the world there was a boy. How wonderful life was now Satine was in the world. But in the Duke, Zidler had gotten much more than he had bargained for. Future Christian looks out the window at the rundown Moulin Rouge. The Duke sits across from Zidler in Zidler's office. Inversion of the Moulin Rouge into a theater will cost a fantastic sum of money, Zidler. So in return, I would require a contract that um binds Satine to me exclusively. Naturally, I am awake. Oh. Uh, my dear Duke. Uh, uh, Please, don't think I'm naive, Zidler. I shall hold the deeds to the Moulin Rouge, and if there are any shenanigans in... I... My man... Servant Warner will deal. Warner with steps it. out. Oh, sorry, we'll deal with it in the only language that you underworld show folk understand. Satine will be mine. It's not that I'm a jealous man. I just don't like other people touching my things. 
He calms down a bit. I understand completely. Zidler signs the deeds yeah. over. Good. Now that we have an understanding, it would appear that uh, you have the means to transform your beloved Moulin Rouge into a theater! The crowd applauds. I shall woo satin over super supper tonight. <laughs> super supper. I'm the Duke, so deal with it. <laughs> Christian pulls out a page of his typewriter in the future, damn it, Travis. <laughs> and we're back in the Moulin Rouge in the process of being made into a theater where Zidler is speaking to the Moulin Rouge crowd. Christian and Satine share a look from across the room and then Satine smiles brightly at the Duke. We will have created the world's first completely modern, entirely electric, totally bohemian, all singing, all dancing, stage spectacular! Everyone applauds and then a wrecking ball, wrecking ball holding Miley Cyrus smashes through the wall, nearly hitting Zidler. Everyone screams and stands. Zidler gets up covered in debris. The show must go on! Yes, the show would go on, but Satine would not attend the supper that night or the following night. Satine, Christian, and Toulouse are all in Christian's garret. Satine is sitting in her robe. Toulouse is preparing food, and Christian is explaining the stuff he's written. Fantastic! <laughs> Mad with jealousy, the evil Maharaja forces the courtesan to make the penniless sitar player believe she doesn't love him. Oh, that's... oh yes! Thank you for curing me of my ridiculous obsession with love, says the penniless sitar player, throwing money at her feet and leaving the kingdom forever. No! No! <laughs> oh, but a life without love, that's terrible! Yes, but the sitar players... Wait! Magical sitar... That's my part, Christian! That's my part! That's my part, Christian! Don't you dare! The magical sitar, who can only speak the truth, says... He... He... He says... The greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. Chocolat, Petit Princess, and others are rehearsing in the Moulin Rouge. Nini singing Shama Shama. Christian and Satine are being rather intimate in her dressing room when the Duke bursts in with a picnic basket and they quickly pretend to be looking at scripts. Picnic, sweet lady. Oh, we have so much to do, so much work. Well, if the young writer can carry a blanket and basket, I don't see why you both can't do it in my presence. Or presence. Toulouse, Satine, and Christian are all rehearsing in another scene. Toulouse. So the magical sitar player falls from the roof. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have drunk during this. Yes, yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. Don't tell me. With a flash of the orchestra rehearsing. The great, greatest thing you'll ever... Christian nods. In a similar scene as before, Christian and Satine are totally making out in her dressing room when the Duke pops in and they quickly pretend to be looking at scripts, both with lipstick on their faces. Still at, still at it, my sweet. I'll say it in French, still Oh, at it. sorry, master, I'm still thinking of my line. It was an acting choice. Make. Master, make. Contract! Oh, my dear Duke, so many lines to learn, been drilling them over and over. The Duke smiles at her and Christian, who is sort of trying to hide his face with the script. For try as the Duke may, it was almost too easy for the young writer and the lead actress to invent perfectly legitimate reasons to avoid him. The Duke and Satine are sitting next to each other, watching the chorus rehearse, when Satine looks back and gives the approaching Christian a little smile, then turns to pretend she didn't see him. Mademoiselle Satine, I haven't quite finished writing that new scene, the, um, will the lovers be meeting at the sitar player's humble abode scene, 
and I wondered if I could work on it with you later tonight. But my dear, I've arranged a magnific magnificent supper for us in the Gothic Tower. Oh, well, it's not important. We could work on it tomorrow. Well, how dare you? It cannot wait until tomorrow. The lovers will be meeting in the Sitar Player's humble abode scene is the most important in the production. We will work on it tonight until I am completely satisfied. But, but, my dear. Dear Duke, excuse me. She walks off. The Duke looks back at Christian. I'm sorry. He is quite obviously not sorry. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. He walks off as well. Christian and Satine meet back above the stage while Zidler is wrapping the rehearsal up. Nice work, family. Bright and early tomorrow, we begin on act two. The lovers are discovered. Satine and Christian are making out passionately behind a curtain. The Duke heads over to Zidler. Zidler, my dear Duke. Everything is arranged for a special supper in the Gothic Tower tonight. You might as well eat it yourself, Zidler. Her affections are waning. Impossible. I'm waning, but impossible. Oh, and you correct me too. That it's, I oh, can't... Apologies, Duke. I've never happened again, Duke. I apologies. Thank you. Thank you. But I understand how important her work is to her, but she's always at it with that damn writer if I don't see her tonight. I'm very well leaving. Zidler looks up and sees Satine and Christian making out. The Duke starts to look that way too. No, my dear Duke. I'll insist Satine takes the night off. All right, all right. Eight o'clock then. He leaves as Zidler looks back up towards Satine and Christian, horrified. Christian and Satine have stopped making out. You'll come tonight? She giggles as they kiss once more and Christian pulls her away with him. Zidler glares up at them. What time? Eight o'clock. Thomas? Yes. Christian flashes her the most adorable smile and leaves as she waves him off. No. Turns and sees Zidler standing there. Are you mad? The Duke holds the deeds to the Moulin Rouge. He's spending a fortune on you. He's given you a beautiful new dressing room. He wants to make you a star. And you're dallying with the writer. Oh, Harold, don't I be saw ridiculous. you together! It's nothing. It's, it's just an infatuation. It's, it's nothing. The infatuation will end. Go to the boy. Tell him it's over. Duke is expecting you in the tower at eight. He turns and leaves. If I should die this very moment, I wouldn't fear. For I know I've never known completeness like being here. Wrapped in the warmth of you. Never mind. Sorry. Wrapped in the warmth of you, loving every breath of you while I live life from dream to dream and dread the day. Back in the dressing room, Satine begins to gasp for air and cough violently. How could I know in those last fatal days that a force darker than jealousy and stronger than love had begun to take hold of Satine? Petite princess and chocolat watch in fear as Satine eventually passes out. Meanwhile, the Duke and Zidler are waiting for Satine in the Gothic Tower. Where is she? Christian is waiting expectantly for her in his garret, but Marie has called the doctor, and Satine is out cold. The doctor is taking a blood sample while Chocolat and Petite Princess pace. You think she'll be up by tonight? Tomorrow morning at the earliest. Christian dejectedly walks back to his garret from the balcony. The server boys close the balcony doors of the Gothic Tower. The Duke's leaving! She's confessing! Confessing? What kind of imbecile do you take me for, Zidler? She suddenly had a terrible desire. 
to go to a priest and confess her sins. Oh, what? She wanted to be cleansed of her former life. She looks upon tonight as her wedding night. Her wedding night. She's like a blushing bride. She says you make her feel like virgin. <laughs> yeah, virgin. You know, touched for the very first time. For the first time? She says it feels so good inside when you hold her and you touch her. Like a virgin? She's made it through the wilderness somehow. She's made it through. She didn't know how lost she was until she found you. She was beat, incomplete. She had been had. She was sad and blue, but you made her feel. Yes, you made her feel shiny and new, oh, like a virgin. Touched for the very first time, like a virgin. Your heart beats, both in time. You've got to give you all her love. Give you all her, you all her love. love. It's fading fast. Fading, fading fast. fast. Fading it all. For you. For you. Love can last. Love, 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 love. Go oh, fine, so fine, and she's thine. Oh, fine. She'll be yours, to be yours. The end of time. The end of time. time. Cause you've made her feel, yes, you've made her feel. She has nothing to hide, like a virgin. Like a virgin. Like a virgin. Touched for the very first time. For the very, 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 the very, very first time. Virgin. Your heart beats both in time, like a virgin. Feels so good inside when you hold her and you touch her. Ha 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 ha. Zidler chases the somewhat frightened Duke onto a bed made from a table and pretends to be sateen as the boys continue to dance. Meanwhile, Christian is waiting in his garret, looking desperate, depressed, and more than a little disappointed. Also, the doctor is checking up on the unconscious sateen, who is starting to wake up. She's so fine and she's mine. Makes me strong. Yes, she makes me bold. And her love thawed out. Yes, her love thawed out. What? What? Why is she scared and cold? The Duke gets up after Zidler and follows him menacingly with the ser server boys. Like a virgin. Ooh, like a virgin. Touched for the very first time. Like a virgin. Our hearts beat both in time. Like a virgin. 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 Feels so good inside when you hold her and touch her, when you hold her and touch her. The Duke approaches Zidler menacingly. Like the love, 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 love. The Duke and Zidler dance together briefly, and then everyone poses. Harold Zidler's brilliant lies had once again averted disaster. He looks out the window again. But no lie, however brilliant, could save Satin. Zindler, Marie, and the doctor are in Satin's dressing room with an unconscious Satin. <clears throat> Monsieur Zindler, Mademoiselle Satin is dying. She has consumption. My little sparrow is dying. Marie makes a cross, and then we see a view of Paris as day breaks. She mustn't know, Marie. The show must go on. We head into Christian's humble garret, where Christian is writing and Satine sits on the bed in her pajamas. All night, the penniless sitar player had waited, and now, for the first time, he felt the cold stab of jealousy. Christian stops writing and looks up at Satine, pained. Satine coughs softly. Where were you last night? I told you I was sick. 
You don't have to lie to me. We have to end it. Everyone knows. Harold knows. Sooner or later, the Duke will find out too. Christian faces away from her, unbelieving and in the process of heartbreak. <clears throat> On opening night, I have to sleep with the Duke. She stands and walks to the balcony door. Jealousy will drive you mad. Christian stands and heads quickly out the other balcony door and around to Satine. Christian! Then uh, we'll write a song. He puts his hands on her face as she tries to interrupt him. And we'll put it in the show. And no matter how bad things get, or whatever happens, whenever you hear it, or when you sing it, or whistle it, or hum it, then, then you'll know. I mean, it'll mean that we love each other. I won't get jealous. Don't work that way, Christian. We have to end it. Never knew I could feel like this Like I've never seen the sky before Want to vanish inside your kiss Cut to a rehearsal with everyone. Now this new scene is the scene where the sitar player writes a secret song for the courtesan. So that whenever, whatever is happening, however bad things are, they remember their love. Satine smiles to herself. And um, we can take it from your line, Satine. So let's take it. Let's take it if we may. Must be careful. Fear not. We will contact our love affair right under the Maharaja. Seasons may change. Winter to spring. The Argentinian passes out. Zilla. And Zidler says, Honestly, Brent, this is impossible. But I love you until the end of time. Cut back to the balcony scene, and he has his arms around her as she turns to face him. Come what may, come what may, I will love you. Until my dying day. They pull out of the city and onto a hill where the Duke and Satine are on the way to having a picnic and Christian is holding the basket. Suddenly the world, the world seems such a perfect place. My dear, a little frog. He goes after the frog and seems to try to squash it. What the? Cut to Christian singing in the Argentinian's place during the rehearsal. Suddenly my life doesn't seem such a waste. It all revolves around you. And there's no mountain too high. Short scenes flash. Toulouse is trying to memorize his lines. Satine and Christian are working on Christian's bed, and Christian is wearing the most adorable outfit you'll ever see in your freaking life. Satine and Christian are holding each other naked by the window with a sheet. No river too wide. Sing out this song and I'll be there by your side. Storm clouds may gather and stars make a lie but i love you i love you until the end until the end of time come what may come what may I love you. 
are shortcuts. Mimi is talking to the Duke. Sati is writing music with the orchestra. Satine looks ill backstage. Christian writes. The magical sitar player falls from the roof and says the greatest thing you'll ever <laughs> know is just to love and be loved in return. Smiles down at Satine, who smiles back. Cut to the come what may rehearsal scene with the Duke watching. Mimi comes up beside him. This ending silly. Why would the courtesan go for the penniless writer? Oops, I mean sitar player. She gives him a look like he's an idiot for not seeing it yet. The Duke seems to make the connection looking from Christian to Satine on stage. Nini goes back to the other diamond dogs and they share a laugh. Come I will love you. Come what may. Yes, I will love you. Come what may. I will love you until my dying day. They all pose for the ending because everybody in this movie is a bunch of posers. I don't <laughs> like this ending. <clears throat> Everyone drops in confusion. I don't like the ending. My dear Duke. Why would the courtesan choose a penniless sitar player over the Maharaja who is offering a lifetime of security? That's real love. Once the sitar player has satisfied his lust, he will leave the courtesan with nothing. I suggest that in the end, the courtesan chooses the Maharaja. But, 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 sorry, sorry, the ending does not uphold the bohemian ideals of truth, beauty, freedom, and love. I don't care about your ridiculous dogma. Why shouldn't the courtesan choose the Maharaja? Because she doesn't love you. There is a long, horrified pause as everyone stares at Christian, who slowly realizes what he's just done. Him. Him. She doesn't love... She doesn't love him. Now I see, Monsieur Zidler. This ending will be rewritten with the courtesan choosing the Maharaja, and without the lover's secret song, it will be rehearsed in the morning, reading for the opening tomorrow night. But, but my, my dear Duke, that would be quite impossible. Charles, the poor Duke is being treated appallingly. These silly writers let their imaginations run away with them. He approaches the Duke. Now, why don't you and I have a little supper? And then afterwards, we can let Monsieur Zidler know how we would prefer the story to them to end. Hmm? Christian is watching them, most agonized. A few minutes later, backstage, Satine is heading to her dressing room and Christian stops her. I don't want you to sleep with him. Destroy everything. Some people walk by laughing, but Christian is still looking agonized. For us. He shakes his head. You promised Jeez. me you wouldn't be jealous. You... It will be all right. Uh, he shakes his head, unable to look her in the eyes. It will. She touches his face and then starts to turn. No. No. Come what may. He turns and leaves. Or she does. She had gone to the tower to save us all. And for our part... We could do nothing but wait. Everyone is waiting quietly in the dark in Moulin Rouge. Christian sits down next to Toulouse. Satine walks into the dark Gothic tower, dressed sexily, where the Duke is waiting. Dear Duke, I hope I have not kept you waiting. In the Moulin Rouge, everyone seems concerned, and Christian takes a big swig of absinthe. 
Don't worry, Shakespeare. You'll get your ending once the Duke gets his ending. Christian lunges at her, but the Argentinian keeps oh. him away. You get your hands off of me! Never fall in love with a woman who sells herself. It always ends bad. Everyone jumps a little. Toulouse watches, totally drunk. Christian looks ready to cry or kill himself. In the Gothic tower, Satine is removing her gloves. The boy has a ridiculous obsession with me. I mean, I indulge his fantasy because he's talented. We need him, but only until tomorrow. In the Moulin Rouge, the Argentinian steps out to the center of the room. We have a dance. In the brothels of Buenos Aires. Cue lights and music. Tells the story of a prostitute. Cue the spotlight on Nini. Everyone laughs and whistles, and she joins the Argentinian. And a man who falls in love with her. They start to dance, mimicking what the Argentinian is saying, while in the lower, in the tower, Satine and the Duke share a kiss, preparing for their supper. First, there is desire. Then, passion. Other male dancers are beginning to approach and Nini reaches out. Then suspicion, jealousy, anger, that's, betrayal. That's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. Oh, sorry. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> then, suspicion, jealousy, anger, betrayal. When love is for the highest bidder, there can be no trust. Without trust, there is no love. Jealousy, yes. Jealousy will drive you mad. Nini now dances with the other men. Christian is taking this all to heart. You don't have to put on that red light. Walk the streets for money. You don't care if it's wrong or if it's right. Roxanne. You don't have to wear that dress tonight. Roxanne. You don't have to sell your body to the night. Christian starts to slowly move toward the door, miserably anguished. Satine and the Duke are sharing an intense supper. What's an intense supper? More dancers join the Roxanne dance. His eyes upon your face. His hand upon your hand. His lips caress your skin. It's more than I can stand. Roxanne. Why does my heart cry? Roxanne. Feelings I can't fight. Satine coughs softly, the Duke approaches her, and they kiss. You're free to leave me, but just don't deceive me. And please believe me when I say I love you. Everything in the Moulin Rouge seems to take a silent pause. If this production succeeds, you will no longer be a can-can dancer, but an actress. I will make you a star. Satine puts on a smile, and the Duke shows her a beautiful diamond choker, takes it out, and puts it on her. The Moulin Rouge is quiet, as if everyone knows what's happening in the Gothic Tower. Except <clears throat> it as a gift from this Maharaja to his courtesan. And the ending? Chocolat leaves the Moulin Rouge. Let Zidler keep his fairy tale ending. He smiles disgustingly, and the dancing starts again. Sam, why does my you don't have to put on that red light, Rock Sam? I can't find you. Don't have to do your hair tonight, Rock Sam. Me, but just 
Don't deceive me and please believe me when I say I love you. Christian looks up into the Gothic Tower and sees Satine with the Duke. Satine looks down, the Duke all over her, and sees Christian. I will love you till my dying day. No. Christian looks away. Oh. He follows her gaze and sees Christian standing there. Oh, I see our very own penniless sitar player. Satine moves away from him as Christian continues to walk down the road. The Duke turns and shuts the window behind him. Dear Duke. Silence! He grabs her wrist and forces her back as she cries out. You made me believe that you loved me. No! The Duke reaches around and snaps her new diamond choker off just as the dancers start the last part of their dance. Roxanne! Christian is heading up to his garret feeling deep jealousy. The Duke chases Satine around the table. Why does my heart cry? Feelings I can't fight. The Duke knocks Satine to the floor. Uh, you don't have to put on that red light. Feelings are you don't have to that best tonight. The Duke has his arms tightly around a very frightened Satine. In the dance, Nini is being tossed around by all the men. Why does my heart cry? He kisses her shoulder roughly as she cries out again, tears streaming down her cheeks. Rah! Sam. Christian is at his window, crying out with agonized jealousy. Feelings I can't fight. Rah! Sam. In the dance, the Argentinian pretends to kill Nini once she gets tossed to him. The Duke has forced Satine down on the table, half her clothes ripped off, when Chocolat suddenly appears and punches him out. Satine sits up, shaken and frightened, and they both look down at the unconscious and bleeding Duke. Christian stands quietly at his window, staring at the Moulin Rouge. Everyone else is now sitting back down in the Moulin Rouge, waiting boredly and with an air of sadness about them. Suddenly, Satine and Chocolat burst into Christian's garret. Satine wraps her arms around the receiving Christian immediately, still sobbing. I couldn't. I couldn't go through with it. I saw you there, and I felt terribly, and I couldn't pretend. And the Duke, he saw. He saw, and he, and he, Christian, I love you. It's okay. And I, I couldn't do it. I don't want to pretend anymore. I didn't want to lie. I don't want. And he knows. He knows. He saw. It's all right. You don't have to pretend anymore. We'll leave. We'll leave tonight. The show. I don't care. He wipes a tear from her cheek. I don't care about the show. We have each other. That's all that matters. As long as we have each other. We have each other. Chocolat, take Miss Satine to her dressing room and get the things she needs. No one must see you. Do you understand? I understand. Darling, you go and pack, and I'll be waiting. Satine laughs tearfully, and they kiss each other hungrily. In the Gothic Tower, someone is cleaning the wound on the Duke's head while Zidler and Warner stand by. It's the boy. He has bewitched her with words. I want her back, Zidler. Find her. He hisses in pain and shoves the person away. And tell her that the show will end my way and she will come to me when the curtain falls, or I'll have the boy killed. Killed? Warner steps out from the shadows. Killed. Satine is in her dressing room, rushing to pack up her things when she sees Zidler in the mirror and whirls to face him in surprise. Marie is there too. Forgive the intrusion, Cherub. You're wasting your time, Harold. I'll be You don't understand. The Duke is going to kill Christian.
Tears are building up in her eyes. The Duke is insanely jealous. Unless you do his ending and sleep with him tomorrow night, the Duke will have Christian killed. He can't scare us. He's a powerful man. You know we can do it. Satine stares at him for a moment and then throws her coat off, picking up her things. Zidler stands. What are you doing? I don't need you anymore. All my life, you made me believe I was only worth what someone would pay for me. But Christian loves me. He loves me, Harold. He loves me, and that is worth everything. We're going away from you, away from the Duke, away from the Moulin Rouge. Goodbye, Harold. She turns and walks to the door. You're dying, Satine. She stops. You're dying. Another trick, Harold? No, my love. The doctor told us. Marie? Marie just looks at her, tears shining in her own eyes. Satine takes a few moments to digest this. I'm dying. I was a fool to believe. A fool to believe. <laughs> it all ends today. Yes, it all ends today. She sits down with Marie. Send Christian away. Only you can save him. for him. Yes. Unless he believes you don't love him. What? You're a great actress, Satine. Make him believe you don't love him. No. Use your talent to save him. Hurt him. Hurt him to save him. The show must go on, Satine. We are creatures of the underworld. We can't afford to fight. And... Later, Zidler walks down the halls backstage at the Moulin Rouge where people are working. Another hero, another mindless crime behind the curtain in the pantomime. On and on. Does anybody know what we are living for? Whatever happens, we leave it, it all to chance. Another, another heartache, another, another failed romance. romance. On, on and on. on. Does anybody, Does anybody know, know what, what we, we are, are living, living for? The show must go on. The show must go on. Outside, Outside the, the dawn, dawn is breaking, breaking on the stage. The stage. Oh, oh, the The show must go on. The show must go on. My heart is breaking. My makeup may be flaking, but my smile still stays on. The show must go on. The bill. I'll, I'll earn the kill. kill. I, I have, have to, to find, find the will to carry, carry on. on. Another, Another heartache. heartache. Another, Another failed failed romance. romance. Another, Another failed romance. Oh. 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 On with the 
show! And out onto the street toward Christian's garret. Christian is standing in his window when Satine walks in. He turns to her and she just stares at him. What's wrong? The Duke. After I left you, the Duke came to see me and he offered me everything. Everything that I've ever dreamed of. He has one condition. I must never see you again. I'm sorry. What are you talking about? I knew who I was. What, what are you saying? What, what about last night? What, what we said? I don't expect you to understand. The difference between you and I is that you can leave any time you choose. But this is my home. The Moulin Rouge is my home. She turns away from him to hide her pain. No, no, there must be something else. This, this can't be real. You... Saltine is breathing a little... Uh, saltine. <laughs> She's a cracker. Satine is breathing a little too rapidly, either from her disease or from holding back tears or both. There's something the matter don't tell me what it is she hurries past him and out the door coughing a few times probably from all those saltines in her throat christian catches her at the door tell me what's wrong tell me the truth tell me the truth the truth the truth is that i am the hindu courtesan and i choose the maharaja that's how the story really ends she gazes at him for a moment and then he lets her go. As storm clouds gather, rain falls and lightning flashes and the thunder rolls. Christian's heart has almost visibly been ripped in half. Jealousy has driven him mad! <laughs> Christian trembles with unbearable anguish as Satine walks back into the Moulin Rouge in a similar state. A little later, Christian runs to the front of the Moulin Rouge in the storm. Satine! Satine! Satine sits at her window, tears streaming down her cheeks. Two guards grab Christian's arms and haul him across the street. Satine! One guard hits him hard across the face and they walk away as he falls to the wet concrete. The bohos lay the emotionally and physically battered Christian down on his bed and help remove his wet clothes. At twilight, Christian sits on his bed with a blanket wrapped around him and stares off numbly. Toulouse is standing by the bed, smiling comfortingly. Things aren't always as they seem. Things are exactly the way they seem. Christian, you may see me as only a drunken, vice-ridden gnome whose friends are just pimps and girls from the brothels and maybe that imaginary wine glass over there. But I know about art and love, if only because I long for it with every fiber of my being. She loves you. I know it. I know she loves you. Go away, Toulouse. Leave me alone. Go away. Go away! Toulouse finally takes his coat and leaves with a last sad look at his tormented friend. I wanted to shut out what Toulouse had said, but he had filled me with doubt. And there was only one way to be sure. Christian pawns his typewriter for cash. I had to know. He stands in the alley outside the Moulin Rouge. So I returned to the Moulin Rouge. One last time. Inside the Moulin Rouge, the show is just starting. She's mine. The curtains open behind him. The cast is dancing on stage. Toulouse in his magical sitar costume. I only speak the truth. 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 Jeez, two more times. I only speak the truth. I only speak the truth. Uh, I only speak the truth. A chama chama. Hey chama chama. Chama chama. Ba Jerry Mary Bandreya. Hey chama chama. Ba Jerry Mary Bandreya. Hey 
Ya chama chama, na chama chama, ma chama chama, ma berry vendria. Christian makes it past Warner. On stage, Satine comes out singing high notes and there is wild applause. She is cut off for a moment with a cough, but quickly composes herself and dances with the others. Diamond's best friend. Zidler looks back at the Duke in the audience who is smirking in satisfaction. Friend. Diamond's best friend, man, cold, girls old, and we all lose our charms in the end. Christian sees her out on stage and then she continues. Diamonds are a That scene is taken upstage where diamonds are placed on her neck. Best friend. She's mine. <laughs> the lights go out. Toulouse is walking backstage with a bottle in his hand, the Argentinian following. I know she still loves him. There's got to be a reason. How about uh, one of them is a duke and the other? He passes out and falls into the hallway below where Christian was moving about. Oh, you agree that something is wrong. I raise my ceremonial wedding sword and join with us in celebration of our sacred. Christian is heading back to Satine's dressing room with part of the Argentinian's costume on. Satine is hacking up more blood in her dressing room. Oh, what a magnificent performance. A little bit more for me. There you go, lovey. That's a girl. Boy is here. We told Satine that if Christian were to come, he'd be killed. He very soon will be. Christian walks into Satine's dressing room and she whirls around. They stare at each other. Zidler goes back on stage. He'll be, he'll be killed? That's, that's why she's pushing him away. To save him. That's it, that's it. Christian! Cries out as the platform he's lifted on is he's on is raised up higher. Sees no. Warner moving quickly through the corridor. No, no, don't! Oh God, this is I up. I've come to pay my bill. Be here, Kristen. Just leave. Kristen stares off for a moment, then turns and follows her. Killed, killed, killed! I must warn him. Satine is trying to hurry away from Christian and losing her breath quickly. Christian is following determinedly. You made me believe you loved me. Why shouldn't I pay you? Please go, Christian. He's got to get on the stage. Jealousy has driven the sitar player into hiding. You did your job so very, very well. She's got to get on stage. Why can't I pay you like everyone else does? Don't, Christian. There's no point. Just leave. She turns and hurries away, Christian chasing after her again. Toulouse Bubba. says something. Bubba. But I have found him. Someone tries to stop Christian, but he shoves the man over as Satine sees Warner lurking around a bend, gun ready, and screams. I'm so sorry. I lost my part. I lost it. Go, go. Go, go. Thank you. If it wasn't real, why can't I pay you? Christian! Christian! Open the 
it all? Let me pay! Let me pay! Satine sees Warner getting closer. Open the door! Tell me it wasn't real. Tell me. The stagehand works to open the door. Tell me you don't love me. Warner is getting closer. Question! Tell me you don't love me. Just as Warner is about to make the shot, the door opens, revealing Christian hovering over Satine on the floor. Warner hides. There is a murmur among the crowd, and Duke looks confused and angry. Murmur, 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 murmur. <laughs> I am not fooled! Though he has shaved off his beard and dons a disguise, my eyes do not lie, for it is he! The same penniless sitar player. Oh! Driven oh. mad by jealousy. Oh, God, no! Christian drags Satine downstage a bit and lets her fall back to the floor where she coughs a few times. And this woman is yours now. I've paid my whore. He throws the cash down on the floor next to her and looks at Satine, who is gazing up at him with tears flowing from her eyes. I owe you nothing. And you're nothing to me. He holds back his own sobs. Thank you for curing me of my ridiculous obsession with love. He walks off the stage. Warner is watching with odd interest, and Toulouse looks like his whole world has been destroyed. Everyone on stage knows how real this is, and Christian stops to stare at the Duke for a moment before walking down the aisle. I can't remember my line. This sitar player doesn't love you. See, he flees the kingdom. He kneels by her and whispers to her. Pumpkin. Christian is starting to look numb again as he walks down the aisle and Warner starts to put his gun away, seeing Christian leaving. Zidler. Satine lets out another sob and then tries to compose herself for the show as Zidler helps her up and Chocolat comes out. Christian is taking the Argentinian's coat off. I got it! No! My bride! Oh. It's time for you to raise your voice to the heavens and say your wedding vows! I got it! I got it! Christian! The greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return! As his voice echoes, something inside Satine seems to click. The actors on stage and the audience glance around and Christian pauses. Like this. Like I've never seen a sky before want to vanish inside your kiss every day i'm loving you more and more listen to my heart can you hear it sing come back to me and forget everything she gasps for air, nearly coughing. The Duke smiles, having no idea that she has seen a Christian. Christian is watching her, tearful with happiness. Sati struggles to keep the orchestra with her. Seasons may change, winter to spring. I love you till the end of time. Come what may. 
The audience turns to him at the other end of the theater in surprise, especially the Duke. Satine smiles, tearful in the same way as Christian. Come what may. Come what may. He heads up to the stage as Satine walks downstage. I will love you. I will love you. Until my dying day. They reach each other in the loop. The Duke looks royally pissed. Come what may. Come what may. I will love you. Until my dying. Ah! Deleuze shouts loudly. The Duke signals Warner, who takes aim at Christian. Christian! He's got a gun! He breaks the platform and swings onto the stage, knocking the gun out of Warner's hand. Petite Princess screams and runs from the gun. They're trying to kill you! The audience just laughs at Deleuze. Shut up! Look, he's got a gun! Gods, seize them! Viva la viva me! A bunch of flashes go off on stage, aka bombs, and everyone runs around crazily. Arabia kicks Warner in the head a few times, but he manages to get the gun. However, the Argentinian pops out of the door at that moment, knocking the gun out of his hand, his hand again. No problem. Go back to work. Everyone starts dancing again. No matter what you say, the show is, show is ending on our way. way. Diddler so knocks Warner over and Sadie kidding. runs up on stage. So stand, stand your ground for freedom, beauty, and, and love. The Duke is trying to point out to Warner where the gun is on stage. How wonderful life is. One day I'll fly away. My gift is my song. The children of the revolution know you won't fool. The children of the revolution. My gift is my song. No, you won't fool the children of the revolution. No, you won't fool the children of the revolution. My gift is my song. Come what may. Come what may. I will love you. Come what may. I will love you. Fly the Duke away. gets up to leave angrily, but hears the gun clatter to the aisle behind him and turns. Come what may. The Duke picks up the gun. I will love you. My way, my way, my way, my way. Zidler punches him before he gets there, and the gun breaks ah. through a window and bounces off the Eiffel Tower as the Duke falls back. Out. Till my day. Day. The Duke sits up dejectedly as the curtain falls. The audience gives a standing ovation, applauding wildly. The entire cast is ecstatic, especially Christian and Satine, who are holding each other's hands. Stand by for curtain call. Dancers, position, please. Christian and Satine kiss, and then Christian starts to pull Satine over for a curtain call. Future Christian sits on his bed, reading over what he's written in deep pain. Satine halts, taking deep gasps for air. Satine. She begins to cough violently. To lose Zidler and other cast members notice what's happening, their smiles replaced with dread. Satine, what's the matter? Christian is easing the coughing and wheezing Satine onto her back while he kneels over her. What, darling? Darling, what's the matter? Darling, Satine, what's the matter? 
Her breathing sounds raspy and violent, worse than it's been yet. Oh, God. Oh, my God. She sees blood dripping from her mouth and touches it. Somebody get some help! Hold the curtain. That's the doctor. The stage manager runs to get the doctor. Christian, I, I, I'm dying. Marie watches sadly. Toulouse is covering his tears. It's all right. The cast is all watching silently. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. No, no, you'll be all right. You, you'll be all right. I'm cold. Cold. Hold me. Christian holds her close, looking so afraid. I love you. Go on, Christian. Go on without you, though. I've got so much to give. Tell our story, Christian. No. Yes. Just promise me. Promise me that way I'll, I'll always be with you. Satine takes a few soft, gasping breaths, smiling for Christian as he weeps and kisses her one last time. Christian pulls back and Satine is dead. Future Christian closes his eyes against the pain. The Duke leaves the theater. All their friends at the Moulin Rouge have their own reactions. Chocolat removes his turban. Zidler looks away. Marie stares. Tears stream down Toulouse's cheeks, but the only sound behind the curtain is Christian's weeping as he cradles Satine's body, rocking back and forth. He gazes into her dead eyes for a moment and then sobs with all of his heart still holding her close. We are brought up and out of the Moulin Rouge, the audience still applauding wildly. The Duke walks alone on a snowy path. Toulouse rises from the windmill again. There was a boy very strange enchanted boy as we pass the windmill to christian's garret it becomes day l'amour sign becomes l'amour satine's bird sits in its gilded cage outside christian's window the bearded christian types days turned into weeks weeks turned into months and then one not so very special day I went to my typewriter, sat down, and wrote our story. A story about a time, a story about a place, a story about a people. But above all things, a story about love. A love that will live forever. The end. The curtain closes over the words, the end, and behind the conductor, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. The curtain fades and the conductor fades. A spotlight lights up the words in memoriam Leonard Lerman, 1934 to 1999. The end. Wow, thank you guys. Thank this wonderful Moulin Rouge cast. I can see a wonderful cast of Moulin Rouge dancers in front of me. <laughs> thank you guys for this wonderful read and thank you guys for watching these wonderful people read this wonderful musical from 2001.